Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be basically kind of a walk through a fabric store to show you all how to understand fabric stores like Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby. Um, the same can be said for nearly any fabric store and how to understand how to choose the correct fabric for the project that you are getting, how to go and find the right supplies, notions, tools, all that stuff. Um, this is specifically for those of you who are brand new to sewing and just don't know where to start, how to choose the correct fabric, how to ask for the yardage, all of that stuff. So I'm going to walk you through that process. I'm going to take you along to Joanne Fabrics, show you all the different sections of fabric, kind of talk you through what fabric can be used for what projects, and make you hopefully a lot more confident about choosing fabrics for projects. So let's head into the store. At nearly any fabric store, the largest fabric department is going to be your cotton fabrics department. This is where you're going to find every single solid color of cotton that you can imagine, any kind of print, novelty fabric, fabric for holidays, for seasons, you name it. And this is the section you're going to wanna to focus on when you're brand new to sewing. And the reason for this is that cotton fabric is super easy to wash, wear, and take care of. It's also the most affordable and it's the most user friendly, whether you're sewing by hand or sewing on machine. It's perfect for introductory sewing projects like bags, pillows, little sewing projects, and it's also great for clothing and apparel without breaking the bank and also without it being super difficult to work with and sew with. Now, even though cotton fabric is the most user-friendly and perfect for anyone who's brand new to sewing or someone who's been sewing for years, this doesn't mean that you should just go grab a bolt of fabric and take it to the cutting counter to purchase it. You should also understand how to read the fabric and all of the details found on the sides of the bolt of fabric. This way you're informed about your purchases and you also are making sure that you're getting the best fabric at the best price and the best option for your project, no matter what you're working with and sewing. Now, if you're making a small sewing project, a more budget-friendly option for purchasing fabric is to simply buy a fat quarter. Fat quarters are pre-cut pieces of cotton fabric that come in 18 by 21 inch sections. This way, you don't overspend on your fabric and you also don't have extra fabric left over if you don't want that. Now, if you're buying fabric directly off of the bolt, especially if you're making a larger sewing project or working on apparel, you're going to want to make sure you understand how to read the sides of the details on the bolts of fabric. This is going to tell you how much the fabric costs per yard, also how great the width is, and also additional details about the fabric, such as its fiber content and sometimes its care instructions. So for example, this fabric is $8.99 a yard. It's 100% cotton, and they say to machine wash it in cool water on a delicate cycle. So before you decide to buy fabric, take a look around, pick some different colors, some different prints, compare prices, compare fiber contents, and choose the best option that fits your project and also fits your budget. The great thing about shopping at June Fabrics or Hobby Lobby is that they oftentimes run sales on their fabric. So if you keep up to date with when their sales are happening, you can get really great deals on all of your fabric and this is the best time to stock up. Some great steps to take in order to be an accomplished sewer is to not only just go and buy supplies and fabric, but to be informed about your purchases and what supplies you are getting. So always make sure you turn and learn and read all the details about your fabric and any kind of additional supplies you are purchasing for your projects. Make sure that you're also reading the signage in every department for fabric. These signs are going to tell you what the fiber content is and also what this fabric is suggested to be used for project-wise. That way you're choosing the best fabric that's going to fit your skill level and the project that you're pursuing. Now outside of our regular cotton fabric section, we also have our flannel section. Now flannel is also made out of 100% cotton, but the fabric is finished differently so that it actually has a very soft and flannel-y texture. This fabric is often going to be used for projects such as blankets, pillows, more homeware type of items, and also super, super soft clothes, like clothes for babies, for example. Sometimes people will use this to make pajamas as well because flannel is the perfect choice for pajamas if you want a little bit of extra cozy warmth. 
Next up we have our muslin fabric, which is any fabric that's basically not dyed. It comes in two different forms, untreated and unbleached, which is a cream color, and then bleached muslin, which is a white, and it also comes in various sizes and widths. Muslin's typically going to be used for muslin mock-ups to test out patterns as you get more into the technical side of sewing. We also have this fabric that looks like a quilt. Essentially, it's called quilted fabric or quilt backing. A lot of people are going to use this to create the back sides of quilts or to make blankets from. You typically aren't going to use this for many apparel type pieces unless you're making some type of coat, but it's essentially two layers of cotton fabric and then a layer of quilt batting quilted together. For anyone who needs larger widths of fabric, we also have extra wide fabric, which typically are solid colors of fabric on longer and wider bolts that come in 90 inch to 108 inch widths. And these are really great for quilt backs and also what they're most commonly used for. There's also a section full of all of this lush and plush fabric. So if you're thinking about fabric that is impeccably soft, this is the section. It comes in different colors and also a lot of different prints because most people are going to use these for blankets or creating items for babies or babies rooms. So any kind of blanket project, this is the fabric you're going to want to go for. Like I mentioned before, cotton fabric is the largest selection of fabric most fabric stores carry, so here we have an entire wall full of novelty fabrics with all different prints. Some fabric stores even carry a selection of pre-cut cotton fabric in two yard increments. These are a little pricey because if you look at this, it's about $20, which rounds out to being about $10 a yard, and you can probably get fabric for way cheaper per yard if you buy it directly off the bulk. If you need solid color fabric, there's always an entire wall of all different shades of colors that come in 100% cotton blends and also sometimes they'll come in poly cotton. So depending on what you're making, either one will easily do and you'll probably easily be able to find the exact shade and color that you need. No matter what sewing project you're working on, there are always many fabric options to choose from, from different colors, different prints, different blends of fibers, novelty fabric, seasonal fabric, you name it, depending on it, what kind of store you go to, you are probably going to easily find what you need if you know what to look for. Now, if you're brand new to sewing and just getting started, the specialty fabric section is one I would stay away from at least for a little while, simply because these fabrics are a little tougher to work with and they're also a lot more expensive and a little bit tougher to take care of wash-wise. So once you get comfortable, then you can start playing around with different types of fabrics, fibers, and finishes. Now, once you start transitioning out of simply using cotton for your projects, then that's the perfect time to start exploring different kinds of fibers and fabrics such as silks, satins, knits, sportswear, polyester, nylon, all of these great types of blends that offer you a lot of other options, especially when it comes to sewing apparel. And this is where the knowledge of fabrics and fibers and how to specifically shop for them based on your project comes in handy. If you're anything like me as a sewer, going to a fabric shop is like a kid in the candy store. I see so many things that I'm interested in that I want to buy and I come up with so many ideas for projects that I will never in my entire life have enough time to fulfill and make, but it's so great to think outside of the box, be creative and also be inspired by everything I'm seeing around me. The great thing about embracing the art of sewing and creating your own projects is that there's fabric created for every single thing you want to sew, whether you're sewing swimsuits, sportswear, comfy loungewear, dresses, shirts, pants, jackets, bridal, formal wear, cosplay, costumes, there is a fabric for everything. And so this is why becoming comfortable with understanding fabrics and knowing how to shop for them and knowing what you're looking for, knowing how to read your patterns is so important. And this comes through continuous practice.
The next important aspect of learning how to shop for fabric is understanding and choosing the correct interfacing. Interfacing is used for many projects from apparel to crafts to interior design projects and there are specific types of interfacing for literally everything. They come in different fiber contents, different weights, sew-in interfacing, rip-away interfacing, fusible, you name it. And most of our interfacing is actually color-coded to help you figure out what specific interfacing you should be using for your specific sewing project. For example, pink interfacing on the bolt is typically going to be used for apparel and that comes in all different kinds of forms. Blue is typically used for embroidery. Orange interfacing is our fusible webbing and our adhesives, which is personally my favorite because it takes out the step of sewing. Yellow is typically used for crafts and home decor and then green is used for quilting. So once again, it not only comes down to understanding and knowing what project you're going to be making, and also understanding the types of interfacing that exist, but also making sure to read and look at the ends of the bolts of interfacing and also look at the colors as well as the signage because everything there is going to tell you what choice is best going to fit your project. They also sell many of the most popular types of interfacing in pre-cut sizes and shapes in bags. So if you don't wanna to have to worry about going up to a cutting counter and asking for a specific size of interfacing to be cut, you can just grab a bag that best fits your project. My go-to is going to be a lightweight fusible interfacing. It's perfect for small projects and for apparel. Once you have your fabric, you are going to need thread in order to sew it. And have no fear, there are plenty of options to choose from. Now just like our fabric, we are going to want to pay attention to the fiber contents of our thread. Fiber contents of our thread come in cotton, polyester, polycotton, silk, there's also different types of metallic threads, but my go-to is going to be cotton, polyester, or a polycotton blend. And I usually like to try and match not only the color of my thread to the color of my fabric, but also the fiber content. So if I'm using cotton fiber I'm for my fabric, I'm also going to typically use cotton thread. Now outside of our fabric and our thread, you were also probably going to need different kinds of notions depending on the project you're working on. Anything from zippers, to buttons, to hook and eyes, to ribbons, bias tape, you name it. And there are so many zippers to choose from, just like there are plenty of different fabrics and threads to choose from. Zippers also come in multiple different lengths. They come in different colors and also different sizes in addition to different styles such as invisible zipper and regular zippers. Now, if you're at the fabric store and you're looking for a pattern, you're going to find a pattern in these giant metal drawers. The metal drawers are broken up into the different brands of patterns that the store offers, and you can find different styles for those brands in the giant catalogs that feature all the different styles, features, and designs of the patterns that they offer. All the patterns have numbers that are associated with their style number, and you can find those in the drawers if you go and look through them. After you've chosen your fabric and you're ready to get it cut out, you're gonna head over to the cutting counter, which is this giant counter. It looks different at every store, but usually it's going to be easily recognizable because there will be people working behind it. At Joanne Fabrics, you have to choose a number, and when they call your number, you can go up to the counter and tell them how much yardage you are going to need of the fabric you are purchasing that day. Outside of fabric, threads, and zippers, there are always walls and aisles full of all the various notions from Velcro to hook and eyes to buttons to eyelids, you name it, anything that your project is going to need or that your pattern requires, you can find in different colors, shapes, and sizes. These aisles also offer you a variety of different types of sewing tools that might be beneficial depending on the project that you're working on.
Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby are the two stores that I usually recommend to go and get fabric. Some Walmarts actually do carry fabric as well, and you can find most basic cotton types of fabrics along with some other fabrics there. The one thing about Walmart is that there's never a designated fabric person working in that section, and if you have questions, they probably aren't going to know what you're talking about. So that's why I usually recommend Joanne Fabrics because everyone who works there is very knowledgeable, and if you have a question, they're probably going to be able to answer it or direct you to someone who can very easily answer it. Hobby Lobby, sometimes it's a hit or miss um so usually recommend Joanne Fabrics then Hobby Lobby and if all you have around is a Walmart that also can work as well but then there are also other specialty fabric stores like if you're wherever you live has a local quilt shop they're also going to have fabric but it's going to be a lot more expensive and specialty and then if you're like me you just go to thrift stores and get um, tablecloths and curtains and sheets and use it as fabric which is a great way to save money and be a lot more sustainable. So the best tip for going out and buying fabric is one, make sure to read over the directions on your pattern or the directions for whatever project you're making and make sure that you understand the fabric that it's asking you to use for that specific project. Or if you don't know, ask someone who is knowledgeable in sewing, whether it be a teacher or a friend or someone at the store and they can help you figure out which kind of fabric and supplies you should get that best suit your project. You're also going to want to pay attention to the nameplates and the titles of every section that you're shopping in because they will explicitly say if you are in a section with cotton fabric and fleece and blanket type fabric, if you are in the flannel section, the satin section, the specialty wear fabric section, make sure that you're not just choosing a fabric because you like the print and the color, but that you're choosing a fabric that is the correct type of fabric for the project that you're using. Typically, you can use most cotton fabrics um, or novelty printed cottons for basic sewing projects and entry Trajectory clothing, but when you get a lot more technical and advanced, that's when you are going to start getting into knitwear and satins and fabric that's a lot more specific and also comes in a wider variety of shapes and sizes. So thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you are a lot more prepared and confident to go out and properly choose the fabric that best fits your project.